Mountain News this morning. Health experts ask you to take good care of your skin while out in the sun so you can avoid a life changing diagnosis. And the University of Kentucky hopes to fill in the gaps in the Commonwealth's healthcare industry as it prepares it to graduate its largest class of future medical professionals. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you, 532. I'm Dakota Makris. It's Tuesday. Thanks so much for waking up with us. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at that forecast this morning. And Brandon, talking about waking up, I'm struggling already, and it's just day two. Yeah. It's day two. Exactly. More on day two this morning. <laughs> Literally. And, uh, we're going to be seeing again some nicer mm -hmm. weather to start today. A little bit warmer than it was this time yesterday. But grab your go juice and let's get it going. Let's take a look and see what the camera network's got for us this morning around the region. And you see from the WIMT studios in Hazard to Pine Mountain over in Leitcher County to the London Corbett Airport to Pikeville to Jenkins and Buffalo Mountain. All, everything in between fairly calm and quiet this morning. A little bit of traffic over in Pikeville, but otherwise not too bad out there to start our day. Temperatures from 43 in Grundy, Wise, Logan and Ashland to 52 in Monticello and Jacksboro. 50 in Somerset this morning. A little bit of wind out there. It's kind of out of the west southwest at this point. So a little bit of a warm wind pushing some of those temperatures up just a little bit this morning. But again, you can see it's already cranking out there and we've already had some gusts of 20 plus miles per hour, especially over into southwest Virginia. So what is today's forecast for $400? What is breezy with late chances for stray showers right around 60 degrees for daytime highs? Dakota. All right, Brandon, thank you. Police in Eastern Kentucky are asking for your help solving a cold case. 22 years ago, Gary Lee Atkins Jr. was hit and killed by a car in Moorhead. He was walking on West Main Street when it happened. Police say the family is still hopeful that the case will be solved. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Moorhead Police Department. Well, crews responded to a fire Sunday night that left one family without a home. Bell County EMS reported heavy black smoke in East Pineville on Williams Branch on Left Fork Road. Crews from several fire departments responded to the scene. More than 8,500 gallons of water were shuttled in to help put out that fire. The situation was determined to be a structure fire. The family was not home at the time and there were no injuries reported. Over in Rockcastle County, a man had a close call after a fire on Friday. Well, the Mount Vernon Fire Department was dispatched to a pickup that caught fire on Main Street around 1030 AM. After firefighters arrived, they found the truck still driving down the road with the engine on fire. The driver tried to stop the truck, but crews say the fire ruined all of the controls inside of it. After getting the truck on a hill, the man was able to stop it and got out safely. Crews were eventually able to put the fire out. The truck was a loss, but no injuries were reported. Health experts are trying to raise awareness about skin cancer to help people avoid an often life-changing diagnosis. A study from Cancer.org shows more than 100,000 people are diagnosed with melanoma, the most serious type of skin cancer each year. Olivia Calfey sat down with an Eastern Kentucky nurse practitioner who has personally dealt with melanoma and wants to ensure others do not have to do the same. Melanoma is a serious skin cancer that derives from the melanocytes in your skin, which is what gives us our color. A few years ago, Leslie Deaton unexpectedly discovered two spots on her leg. She later found out were melanoma, saying she is lucky she found it in the early stages and she believes days like Melanoma Monday are important to raise awareness. Prior to my diagnosis of melanoma, I was not a sunscreen user. I did use the tan in bed, not a lot, but I did. Sharing now the importance of yearly skin checks and key factors to pay attention to on your own skin. So you wanna look for what we call the ABCs of your skin. So if you see something that's asymmetrical, which means one side's not the same as the other, or it's not round, that's your first thing. The second is borders. Are the borders smooth? Are they zigzag? Are they irregular? Adding the third sign to look for is the spot changing colors. Plus, she says a common fact people often do not know is that melanoma is not just found in places where the sun is exposed. Melanoma can be anywhere. It can even be in your digestive tract. It can be in your eyes. It can be in your mouth. So you want to go have your, your oral exams, your teeth cleaned. You know, sometimes if you have a spot there, it's going to be found there. 
And she says it is important to also avoid strong UV rays. Some people don't think about UV light just being outside. You know, you get those UV rays from the sun, um, ultraviolet lights, whether it be tanning beds or going into areas that have UV light. Going out into the sun, you need to avoid the midday sun, which we say is from at least noon to 4 p.m. Deaton also says it is important to wear sunscreen with an SPF 30 or stronger. You can still get a tan being in the sun with your sunscreen. It's just blocking the harmful rays. Yeah. So I think that's something people don't know is you, you can still tan, but protect yourself. That was Olivia Calfee reporting. Deaton says she does not recommend tanning oil, but if you choose to use it, apply it over your sunscreen. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic is over and next week the COVID national emergency will be two. The national emergency ends May 11th. That means the federal government will no longer pay for testing or treatment. It's now up to private insurers or for you to foot the bill. One doctor at Baptist Health Corbin says the emergency ending will also be financially tough on some hospitals. Yes, you are seeing hospitals across the nation struggling financially. I think you're going to see a lot close. Uh, I mean, even in the state of Kentucky, there's over 50 hospitals that are at risk for closing. COVID-19 no longer seems to be a burden on the healthcare industry, but leaders say it's still out there. Kindergarten students in Pike County got to hear about a possible health career for them years down the road. as part of one of its of the newest programs created by those at Pikeville Medical Center. It's called Doctor's Day and is catered to teaching students about careers in the medical field. PMC Vice President for Workforce Development James Glass says those involved want to give kids an early start in the medical field. And so we want to start early, we want to go early and often as it relates to trying to educate these young people as to what type of careers we have here in Eastern Kentucky, specifically as it's related to the healthcare careers, anything from nursing to doctors to rad techs to therapists. Well, Glass says he hopes the program inspires youth to think, to think about a possible future in the medical field. Students are preparing for graduation day, and this year, one class will help fill a major need. University of Kentucky's College of Medicine is graduating its largest ever class, and it comes as the need for medical professionals is high. The university is working to bridge the gap and fill holes in the healthcare industry. Dreams are coming true for Dr. Charles Griffith, acting dean at UK's College of Medicine. The school is about to graduate a class of 190 students who are getting ready to enter the workforce. For years, the school had to turn away students because it just didn't have the space or seats. Well, what was sad about that was we have hundreds of students, hundreds of Kentuckians that were qualified trying to apply to our medical school and we couldn't accept them every year. And we're a state that does, has a position shortage. And as a flagship university to not be able to, to, to admit more of these qualified Kentuckians was really kind of heartbreaking. Well, there are now four sites across the state where med students can work on their degree. By Dr. Griffith's math, if the university now graduates 65 more doctors a year compared to the recent past, history shows roughly half will eventually practice here in Kentucky. A life-size statue of Secretariat has been installed at the Kentucky Horse Park over in Lexington. Nigel Fennell is the one who built the statue with the exact measurements of the famous horse. He did so by welding thousands of two inch flat steel pieces shaped like Secretariat together for the skin over the frame. He was working as a as a farrier in England when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Within months, he moved to Kentucky and began using his steel skills to build the unique sculpture. After several more months and thousands of hours in his warehouse at Foreman's Forge near Lexington, the Secretariat statue was complete. Well, just ahead this morning, the world of music mourns the loss of a talented man whose sound and storytelling helped inspire an entire era of musical art. And the May Chill continues across the region, but some relief, at least from the gloom, is coming. I have more on our temperature start to climb in about three minutes.